takes place on January the 20th on Showtime for the WBA Super Bantamweight Championship. Puts together the challenger and interim champion, Guillermo Rigondeaux versus the champion, Rico Ramos. So overall, this is an interesting fight. It's very intriguing. I think a lot, there's a lot of interest into this fight, especially among the hardcore boxing fan circle. So pretty much I'm just going to break this down as quick as I can because I got things to do. So anyway, peeps, let's get into this fight. Guillermo Rigondeaux is probably one of the greatest amateur fighters of all time. Um, it took him a long time to become to hit the professional ranks due to the fact that, of course, Cuban fighters have had and pretty much rarely ever became professional fighters. Um, this is this is a um, stage in boxing where where Cuban boxers are starting to cross over to the United States and and um, make a name for themselves due to the fact that a lot of there have been many great Cuban amateurs. That have never had this, had the opportunity to fight, you know, fighting boxing, you know, professional boxing. You know, we have Felix Savone and Teofilo Stevenson, um, two great amateur heavyweights, um, who have never, you know, who never crossed over and, and actually um, fought professionally. You know, pretty much their careers were just amateur careers. But now we have fighters such as um, Yuri Orkis Gamboa. We have um, Guillermo Rigondeaux. We had Joel Casamayor. We had, you know, quite a few Cuban boxers that were Arizona De Lara. Quite a few Cuban boxers over the last, you know, few years, especially over the last three or four years, that are pretty much, you know, coming to their own in the United States or worldwide, you know, as fighters, as prize fighters. And Guillermo Rigondeaux, I think, is probably one of the one of the is probably the best out of all of them. Guillermo Rigondeaux is probably one of the most versatile bo versatile boxers. Um, you know, out there at the moment, behind you know some of the be some of our better fighters, pound for pound, and I think that he gives anybody that he faces a tough fight. Um, so in this fight, you know, there's so I can mention I can and I can talk for about 10, 15 minutes on Rick and Diaz style, but I'll just, all I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the cliff notes of his style. His defense is is great. You know, he uses his shoulders, he moves his head, he evades punches. You know, using his shoulders and and um, you know, ducking the chin, evading the jab, coming underneath the jab with the with a body shot, um, counter body shot, or um, sometimes he uses the leg or uses angles as defense. Um, he can he can come forward, you know, he can walk and box coming forward and be aggressive, but also he can be the counter punch and use your aggression against you. There's so many things that that um, Rick and Dio can do that that um, makes him a tough opponent for any fighter that he faces. He has quick. Not only that, you know, he, he has quick hands. He has good power. He's a good body puncher. He's a great counter puncher. There's just so many things that he can do in the ring, and so many dimensions um, to his game. And then not only that, you know, he can combine all those dimensions and and make way for a tough fight compared to Rico Ramos on the other side. I think Rico Ramos is. Um, I think he is a natural counter puncher from the looks of him. You know, pretty much he gets his big shots off. When his opponent, you know, try, when his opponent misses, so pretty much he does have a counter punching tendency, but he's usually forced to take the lead in fights. And Rigan Diaz is a fighter that can take the lead. He can take the lead, and you know he'll walk forward, you know, behind the jab, and he's always behind that jab, or he works behind that counter, or he works off a of defense, you know, moving his shoulders, moving his legs, using his angles, creating you know awkward angles, creating awkward spaces in the ring to work from. So, in this fight in particular, against Rico Ramos, of course, he wants to use his angles because Ramos comes forward in a straight line most of the time and he squares up. So as he's in an angle and he's using and um and he's moving his shoulders, that's going to lead to openings. That's going to lead to a counter body shot, counter uppercut to the body, um, straight left hand to the um, you know right down the middle near in between the solar plexus, um, you know things of that nature. The um, counter um, counter right hook is going to be open because Ramos. You know, doesn't necessarily fight behind the jab, the lead right hook. There's going to be a lot of punches that Rigan Diaz can throw in this particular fight against Rico Ramos. Um, and also, he, he can use the ring to his advantage, fight off that back foot. If he fights off the back foot, then more than likely, you know, he can fire off that lead lead left hand that Ramos is not going to see coming. Um, a majority of shots, um, 
you know, he can, you know, I think he, he does have the quickness to lead in with the right hook. He has the quickness to, to lead in with the left hand. And also he has the ability to be the counter puncher and use Ramos aggression against him in this fight. And I just think that he could fight off the back foot and fire and can just continue fire, continuously firing off the left hand. And I think he could very, very well win the fight, you know, just using that. Or he can use the right hook. Or he can go to the body. There's just so many things he can do against Ramos. And not only that, Ramos doesn't really protect his body. He doesn't clinch all that well. So I think in, in clinches, um, you know, in clinches, he all he has to do is just go, go and hit him with hard body shots. And that's pretty much what he needs to do in this fight. And there's a lot more he can do, but I'm not going to go into it. Um, Rico Ramos, of course, Re the thing with Rico Ramos, Rico Ramos has power in both hands. Um, he has power in both hands. He's, I think he's a natural counter puncher. He's, and the advantage that he does have a bit in this fight is that, he, that the last couple of opponents that he's faced are southpaws. Um, I think in this particular fight, I think that he doesn't really fight off the jab. Of course, um, he has, you know, his hands are in a kind of a counter punching position. He, you know, he, but he, he usually throws single shots um, from time to time. He'll hook up. He'll put together some combinations every, from time to time, but he he he's good with single shots. He doesn't. I think personally that he needs to double up his left hook. He doesn't throw the best straight right hand, but he throws a very good left hook. Um, and um, I think that's probably one of his best punches is the left hook, which he could use, which is what he could use against the southpaw opponent. In this particular fight, he he does have to come forward. He has to fight. He has to actually fight Rigan Diaw. He has to make him respect his power early. You know, he has to you know go to his body. He has to um, bring shots up top. He has to throw and put together a different assortment of punches. Not only that, but he has to you know make all kinds of adjustments in this fight. He has to protect himself from the body shot. He has to you know control the range. He has to you know stand back and look for the counter. He he actually has to feint in this fight. And Ramos has to throw. The the feint works against counter punches. Um, when you're facing a counter puncher, the feint always works most of the time, because counter punches do commit to the feint. So when he commits to the feint, he needs to throw the straight right hand right down the middle. Um, and and the problem with Ramos is he does wind up and he gets out of position and he winds up from time to time and he's open because he lunges down and his chin is exposed. So, but there's all kinds of mistakes that Ramos makes. That makes me think that Guillermo Rigondeaux wins this fight, and I wouldn't be surprised if he beat him in seven rounds. Um, I, I just think Rigondeaux has power as well, and he's and he's a good body puncher. So I think personally he needs to take Ramos out as early as he can. Um, but if he doesn't, I think he he does have the adjustments to defeat him. I think he has the adjustments to defeat him, and I think that and I just think that overall technically. Rigan Diaw is much better than Ramos. Ramos has to come in and he has to make him respect his power. But behind him respecting his power, he has to come up with a lot of different things. His straight right hand, um, he like I said, he winds up on and he gets out of range, and that and that works very well for a counter puncher. Um, when you're when you're against a counter puncher with a good left uppercut, um, and and um, kind of waits on you, is very reactionary. So this works in fa in favor for Rigan Diaw. So I think Rigan Diaw defeats Rico Ramos. I would, like I said, I would like to see. I think he should beat him in seven rounds, but I think that Rigan Diaw more than likely will dissect him, dissect him, and probably beat him in probably probably beat him in eleven, twelve rounds most likely. But like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if he beat him in six or seven rounds. But it's a winnable fight for Ramos as well, um, because any punch can change the the course of the fight. So anyway, peeps, I'm out of here. That was the distance. Thanks for watching. Peace. It's the infamous small MOBB. <laughs> can't be touched. Can't you see? G Nate, you, 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 you,